All right, so another example here of finding the interval and radius of convergence. So here we're going to look at part B, n to the third uh, times x plus 5 to the n over 6 to the n. So again, we're just going to use the ratio test, the limit as n goes to infinity. We would have n plus 1 to the third, x plus 5 raised to the n plus 1, 6 raised to the n plus 1. Then we uh, flip and multiply by the reciprocal, so 6 to the n over n cubed times x plus 5 raised to the n power. So let's see, let's uh, try to simplify this a little bit. We've got the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, n plus 1 to the third over n to the third. Not a real good way to simplify that. Uh, we could always write it as n plus 1 over n all of that raised to the third power. Let's see, we've got x plus 5 to the n plus 1 over x plus 5 to the n. That's going to leave us with an x plus 5 in the numerator. And then we have 6 to the n over 6 to the n plus 1. That's going to leave us with a 6 in the denominator. Let's see, we can factor out the absolute value of x plus 5 over 6. And then we can multiply that by the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n to the third. But as n goes to infinity, since the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, uh, the n plus 1 over n, that's just going to approach 1. So then we have 1 cubed, which is still going to equal 1. So really we've got x plus 5 over 6 times 1. So that's our, our uh, ratio generically. And again, what we want, we want the absolute value of x plus 5 over 6, okay, so times 1. We want that to be less than 1. So now we've got our little uh, inequality, uh, our absolute value inequality that we have to solve. So we have, okay, negative 1 less than x plus 5 over 6 less than positive 1. If we multiply both sides by 6, we'll get, well, I should say all parts by 6. We'll get negative 6 less than x plus 5, let's see, less than positive 6. And now if we subtract 5, we'll get negative 11 less than x, uh, less than positive 1. So I know for sure the series converges for any number between negative 11 and 1, but we have to check the endpoints separately. So we'll have to see whether or not the endpoints are included. <clears throat> so let's see, let's go back to our original series here. So we have to check x equals negative 11 kind of individually, and then we'll have to check x equals positive 1 individually as well. So let's see, I'm going to plug negative 11 into our series. So we have n equals 1 to infinity, n cubed, negative 11 plus 5 raised to the n over 6 to the n. Well, <clears throat> that's going to give us the series n equals 1 to infinity. We have n cubed. This will give us negative 6 raised to the n power over 6 to the n power. That simplifies to negative 1 to the n times n cubed. Well, here we can just use the test for divergence. Because when we take the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n cubed, that's definitely not going to equal 0. So this series is going to diverge. So when x equals negative 11, it's going to diverge. The same thing, I think, when we plug in n equal, or excuse me, x equals 1. We've got the series from 1 to infinity. We would have n cubed. But now we would have 1 plus 5 raised to the n over 6 to the n. Well, this is 6 to the n over 6 to the n. Those will just cancel. So we're left with a series from n equals 1 to infinity of n cubed. But the exact same thing, if we do the test for divergence, the limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed, that definitely does not equal 0. So that tells us the series diverges. So in this case, that tells us that our interval of convergence, therefore, the interval of convergence... is going to be from negative 11 up to positive 1. 
And again, the radius is just going to be the length of that interval. So 1 minus negative 11 divided by 2. Well, let's see, that's going to be 12 over 2, which is going to give us a value of 6. So the radius of convergence equals uh, 6. The interval of convergence is uh, negative 11 to positive 1. Again, parentheses because it does not converge at the endpoints.